Welcome back to Isha Gaming. Now a lot of you saw my games of the year video and a lot of you pointed out that some games were missing from that video because I really wanted to make a dedicated video to all the disappointing games of 2023 and they were disappointing because I had too high of expectations from them. I mean, just look at Starfield. I don't know about you, but in my opinion, definitely, there were a lot of disappointing games in 2023. And maybe some of these games needs a second chance and a second look. Definitely, I'm not ruling that out at all. Actually, maybe I need to go back to a lot of these and give them a second chance. <laughs> so I want to start with Atelier Risa 3. Now, it was one of my most anticipated games of 2023. I love the Atelier series. I mean, a lot of you found my channel because of this series, so it's kind of like a series that is for me. I love the Atelier games, but Risa 1 was really good. Risa 2 was even better in my opinion. So of course my expectations were sky high for Risa 3. Now starting off, Risa 3 starts off really cute. You meet all of your friends again and they hang and they have grown a bit and some mysterious islands pops up in the region and it is intriguing and it is kind of exciting. Then they meet this girl and they travel to a faraway land and they start exploring this land and I mean so far so good right and a lot of quality of life improvements were implemented in Risa 3 I mean you run faster you can loot while running it's an open world yada yada but I mean after a little while I was like is this it now you get to this town and the main story is very focused on the rivalry within the town on <laughs> Something as silly as what is being the best material to build this statue in town. And this storyline went on for so incredibly long. And I was like, is this the real storyline this time around? Which material is the best one? I mean. So the story, after a tiny bit into the story, it did not hook me. It was disappointing. I mean, compared to the storyline of Risa 1 and 2, where the story is just so much better. I really wanted to see how the story progressed in Risa 1 and 2, which I don't feel now in Risa 3. So actually, I never really reviewed Risa 3, I just made a video on it. Um, that is because I was so much forcing myself to play it and not really enjoying it. Do I need to go back to it and finish it up and wrap it up? I know I will, because I feel like I need to complete every Atelier game, but it is in my backlog and it's probably gonna be in my backlog for quite some time until I feel like I have nothing else to play sort of thing. Also I feel like the open world was working against itself. The open world was too big. I'm just so sorry that it was a disappointing game for me but it just was. But I will give it another chance. I mean I have to. <laughs> I feel like I have to. I want to also. Uh, but I'm mentioning that as a disappointing game. Now another disappointing game was Atelier Marie. It is of course a remake of a very 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 old game and it is almost unrecognized compared to modern day Atelier games. The mechanics and how you do things in Atelier Marie compared to modern Atelier games. So it's almost like another series. Now, I like what they did with the graphics in Atelier Marie, but the game was just not for me. I didn't feel it was very exciting. I felt like the countdown of the days constantly was stressing me a bit out. There was not much of a story to speak of. So that was also a disappointing game for me, but I didn't to be honest, I didn't have that high of an expectation of Atelier Marie as I did with Risa 3. Uh, but still, it's in this list and it didn't make my Game of the Year list video list. Now, next up, we have Diablo 4. I was a big fan of Diablo 3, and everyone was. Such a good game. But Diablo 4 just did not hook me. And some of the things that I immediately missed from Diablo 3 was that there was no longer like a stacked counter of your killings, if you know what I mean. Like we had in Diablo 3, there was none of that. And which was actually a mechanic in the game that increased the fun factor immensely for my part, you know, breaking stuff in the environment and keeping that number going up and up. What is that called? <laughs> Kill streak. So I just never felt really hooked into Diablo 4 and I wish I was because I went into it expecting just a better game than Diablo 3. But still, I feel like Diablo 3 is the best Diablo. So there's that. 
Okay. Rune Factory 3 special. Remember guys, I was looking forward to it. But you know what? I have a feeling that this game is better on the DS, on the original console of which it was originally released, because there's just something with the graphics that is annoying me. Just like with Rune Factory 4 special, the stretching of the graphics, I mean, it's a lazy job when you're trying to remake a game uh, that's coming from the DS and then going to a high definition switch modern console so I found the graphics to just be really annoying also it's so dated and you can feel that datedness and we have become spoiled now there are plenty of charm to be found in Rune Factory 3 and especially for the people that already has nostalgia for the original game which I just didn't have I never played the original so therefore there was no nostalgia factor for me there was just here's the game and it's a remake of a really old game and this is how we did I did not get hooked. I still think Rune Factory 5 is the best Rune Factory game. Uh, followed up with the Rune Factory 4 on the actual 3DS, the 3DS version of that game. And I have a feeling that Rune Factory 3 is also better played on the original console on the DS. I have a feeling. I don't have it. Have a feeling. Now next up we have Starfield and I was looking forward to it because I needed to see what Bethesda had been doing with their time instead of making the next Elder Scrolls and this is what we got. The story didn't hook me, the gameplay didn't hook me. I felt like when I was trying to explore I was not rewarded with the exploring and it was just so unlike what I imagined it would be. I imagined because everyone said so that it would be an Elder Elder Scrolls in space. I did not get that feeling. Now, to be honest with you guys, I didn't play it too much. Uh, perfectly honest with you guys. Because I have so many games that if a game doesn't hook me within the first five hours, I'm gonna game jump. <sighs> Sorry. Now, of course, some people loved it. I have seen some people saying that they loved it. 100 hours into it, loved it and all of that. Traveled the entire universe. But I was just not such a person. Uh, so it goes into my disappointing um, list. Now we have some smaller titles that were also disappointing. Uh, Silent Hope. It was not what I imagined. I imagined like a life sim up there at the plateau where you have the merchants and the farm looking area. I imagined when I was watching the initial trailer, the first trailer of Silent Hope, I thought that that would be like a Stodgy Valley area where you could have your farm and upgrade your house and like a real life sim. And then you went down to dungeons and did some fighting. I thought it was gonna be more Rune Factory, if you know what I mean. But up there on the plateau, there were only NPCs standing still, offering some menu-based crafting. And then you went down to the dungeons and they were very repetitive. So it was just not what I was expecting. It is a game for what it is. It's probably me that interpreted the initial trailer wrong, but I'm putting it into disappointing games for that reason. I mean. Now Trinity Trigger was also a game that I thought was gonna be much better than uh, I ended up thinking it was. I played it for a while and I liked some of it. There were some good parts of it, but it just didn't hold up to my standards, I don't know. And I never felt really, really hooked. I feel like it had a lot of potential, but there was just something. I'm not sure how to put my finger on it, but there was just something that just made me go, I'm gonna game jump from this one. <laughs> now, the last game of this video will be Fairy Fencer F Refrain Chord, and I thought it would be a Fire Emblem like game in the Fairy Fencer F universe, which it <laughs> is, which it is, but it lacks all the finesse of the gameplay of an actual Fire Emblem game. So that game did not hook me because I feel like maybe the writers are different, because I feel like the characters were not as funny in this one as they were were in the first Fairy Fencer game, Fairy Fencer F Advent Dark Force, if you wanna play that, which was hilarious and funny. This time around, I did not really get the humor, I don't know. Maybe they had different writers.
writers, dialogue writers in this game. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. But it didn't hook me. Okay, so that was uh, me repeating the same <laughs> for every game in this video. It didn't hook me. Now, I am sure there were a lot of games that was disappointing for you too. And I want to know your disappointing games down below in the comment section. And I will be reading every single comment because I'm looking forward to this. And also, I want you guys to be a, a little strict with me this time around. Uh, if any of the games that I mentioned right now turns out to actually be really good, like masterpieces, give me your opinion down below. If you want to tell me that Atelier Risa 3 gets better, tell me that down below because I'm not done with any of these games because I was so disappointed or I game jumped uh, kind of early uh, because the games didn't hook me. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you later in 2024.